The Huntsman by Anton Pavlovich Chekhov. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Huntsman. A sultry, stifling midday. Not a cloudlet in the sky. The sun baked grass had a disconsolate, hopeless look. Even if there were rain, it could never be green again. The forest stood silent, motionless, as though it were looking at something with its treetops, or expecting something. At the edge of the clearing, a tall, narrow shouldered man of forty in a red shirt, in patched trousers that had been a gentleman's, and in high boots, was slouching along with a lazy, shambling step. He was sauntering along the road. On the right was the green of the clearing. On the left, a golden sea of ripe rye stretched to the very horizon. He was red and perspiring, a white cap with a straight jockey peak, evidently a gift from some open-handed young gentleman, perched jauntily on his handsome flaxen head. Across his shoulder hung a game bag with a black cock lying in it. The man held a double-barreled gun cocked in his hand, and screwed up his eyes in the direction of his lean old dog, who was running on ahead, sniffing the bushes. There was stillness all round, not a sound. Everything living was hiding away from the heat. Igor Vlasich, the huntsman suddenly heard a soft voice. He started and, looking round, scowled. Beside him, as though she had sprung out of the earth, stood a pale-faced woman of thirty, with a sickle in her hand. She was trying to look into his face, and was smiling diffidently. "'Oh, it's you, Pelagia,' said the huntsman, stopping and deliberately uncocking the gun. Well, "'How have you come here?' The women from our village are working here, so I have come with them, as a laborer, Igor Vlasich. Ah, growled Igor Vlasich, and slowly walked on. Pelagia followed him. They walked in silence for twenty paces. I have not seen you for a long time, Igor Vlasich, said Pelagia, looking tenderly at the huntsman's moving shoulders. I have not seen you since you came into our hut at Easter for a drink of water. You came in at Easter for a minute, and then, God knows how, drunk. You scolded and beat me and went away. I have been waiting and waiting. I have tired my eyes out looking for you. Ah, Igor Vlasich, Igor Vlasich, you might look in just once. What is there for me to do there? Of course there's nothing for you to do, though to be sure there is a place to look after, to see how things are going. You are the master. I say, you have shot a black cock, Igor Velasich. You ought to sit down and rest. As she said all this, Pelagia laughed like a silly girl and looked up at Igor's face. Her face was simply radiant with happiness. Sit down. If you like, said Igor, in a tone of indifference, and he chose a spot between two fir trees. Why are you standing? You sit down too. Pelagia sat a little way off in the sun and, ashamed of her joy, put her hand over her smiling mouth. Two minutes passed in silence. You might come for once, said Pelagia. What for? sighed Igor taking off his cap and wiping his red forehead with his hand. There is no object in my coming. To go for an hour or two is only waste of time. It's simply upsetting you. And to live continually in the village my soul could not endure. You know yourself I am a pampered man. I want a bed to sleep in, good tea to drink, and refined conversation. I want all the niceties while you live in poverty and dirt in the village. I couldn't stand it for a day. Suppose there were an edict that I must live with you. I should either set fire to the hut or lay hands on myself. From a boy, I've had this love for ease, 
There is no help for it. Where are you living now? With the gentleman here, Dmitri Ivanitch, as a huntsman. I furnish his table with game, but he keeps me, more for his pleasure than anything. That's not proper work you're doing, Igor Velasich. For other people it's a pastime, but with you it's like a trade, like real work. You don't understand, you silly, said Igor, gazing gloomily at the sky. You have never understood, and as long as you live you will never understand what sort of a man I am. You think of me as a foolish man, gone to the bad, but to anyone who understands I am the best shot there is in the whole district. The gentry feel that, and they have even printed things about me in a magazine. There isn't a man to be compared with me as a sportsman. And it is not because I am pampered and proud that I look down upon your village work. From my childhood, you know, I have never had any calling apart from guns and dogs. If they took away my gun, I used to go out with the fishing hook. If they took the hook, I caught things with my hands. And I went in for horse dealing, too. I used to go to the fairs when I had the money. And you know that if a peasant goes in for being a sportsman or a horse dealer, it's goodbye to the plow. Once the spirit of freedom has taken a man, you will never root it out of him. In the same way, if a gentleman goes in for being an actor or for any other art, he will never make an official or a landowner. You are a woman. You do not understand. But one must understand that. I understand, Igor Vlasich. You don't understand if you're going to cry. I, I'm not crying, said Pelagia, turning away. It's a sin, Igor Vlasich. You might stay a day with luckless me anyway. It's twelve years since I was married to you, and, and, and there has never once been love between us. I, I am not crying. Love muttered Igor, scratching his hand. There can't be any love. It's only a name we are husband and wife. We aren't really. In your eyes I am a wild man, and in mine you are a simple peasant woman with no understanding. Are we well matched? I am a free, pampered, profligate man, while you are a working woman, going in bark shoes and never straightening your back. The way I think of myself is that I am the foremost man in every kind of sport, and you look at me with pity. Is that being well matched? But we are married, you know, Igor Velasich, sobbed Pelagia. Not married of our free will. Have you forgotten? You have to thank Count Sergei Pelovich and yourself. Out of envy, because I shot better than he did, the Count kept giving me wine for a whole month, and when a man's drunk, you could make him change his religion, let alone getting married. To pay me out, he married me to you when I was drunk. A huntsman to a herd girl. You saw I was drunk. Why did you marry me? You were not a serf, you know. You could have resisted. Of course, it was a bit of luck for a herd girl to marry a huntsman, but you ought to have thought about it. Well, now be miserable. Cry. It's a joke for the Count, but a crying matter for you. Beat yourself against the wall. A silence followed. Three wild ducks flew over the clearing. Igor followed them with his eyes till, transformed into three scarcely visible dots, they sank down far beyond the forest. How do you live? he asked moving his eyes from the ducks to Pelagia. Now I am going out to work, and in the winter I take a child from the foundling hospital and bring it up on the bottle. They give me a rouble and a half a month. Ah! Again silence. From the strip that had been reaped floated a soft song which broke off at the very beginning. It was too hot to sing. They say you have put up a new hut for Aquilina, said Pelagia. Igor did not speak. 
so she is dear to you? It's your luck, it's fate, said the huntsman, stretching. You must put up with it, poor thing. But good-bye. I've been chattering long enough. I must be at Boltovo by the evening. Igor rose, stretched himself, and slung his gun over his shoulder. Pelagia got up. And when are you coming to the village? she asked softly. I have no reason to. I shall never come sober, and you have little to gain from me drunk. I am spiteful when I'm drunk. Good-bye. Good-bye, Igor Vlasich. Igor put his cap back on his head, and, clicking to his dog, went on his way. Pelagia stood still, looking after him. She saw his moving shoulder blades, his jaunty cap, his lazy, careless step, and her eyes were full of sadness and tender affection. Her gaze flitted over her husband's tall, lean figure, and caressed and fondled it. He, as though he felt that gaze, stopped and looked round. He did not speak, but from his face, from his shrugged shoulders, Pelagia could see he wanted to say something to her. She went up to him timidly and looked at him with imploring eyes. "'Take it,' he said, turning round. He gave her a crumpled rouble note and walked quickly away. "'Good-bye, Igor Vlasich,' she said, mechanically taking the rouble. He walked by a long road, straight as a taut strap. She, pale and motionless as a statue, stood, her eyes seizing every step he took. But the red of his shirt melted into the dark color of his trousers. His step could not be seen, and the dog could not be distinguished from the boots. Nothing could be seen but the cap. And, suddenly, Igor turned off sharply into the clearing, and the cap vanished in the greenness. Goodbye, Igor Velasich, whispered Pelagia. And she stood on tiptoe to see the white cap once more. End of the Huntsman by Anton Chekhov